Again, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now, it's the end of another month, uh, and another four MCNs have rolled in. Enjoyed reading them all as ever. And uh, I've picked out, as usual, a number of articles that have caught my eye this month. So stick around, stay tuned, next couple of minutes, and I'll tell you what's been in the news this month, January 2017. Okay then, the uh, the first paper, this is the uh, January the 4th edition. I only picked out a couple of things from this one. It's a bit, uh, bit of a thin edition, it being, I suspect, the first one after Christmas, and still maybe the guys are on leave or whatever. So not a huge amount, by way, of content in here focusing mainly on, on new bikes, and we've talked about those in the past a lot, or, or the great deluge of new bikes that there are for 2017. Anyway, uh, first thing that I've picked out here is uh, just a little story um, that kind of actually sets the scene for this, this month's review video, because it's a Triumph story, and I'm going to be talking quite a lot about Triumph uh, in the next couple of minutes. Uh, but this story that's uh, caught my eye is down at the bottom here of this page, uh, and it's that Triumph have posted massive profits. Now, this is a great uh, British success story, but this is this is incredible because their profits this year have actually gone up by 90.8%. I mean, that is a phenomenal amount, isn't it? Particularly for a for a British manufacturing company, that's fantastic news. So, uh, so well done, Triumph, and that's um, largely boosted by the new Bonneville range and, of course, um, the great success of the Thruxton and the Thruxton R last year, uh, and of course the Bob and L, which apparently has taken more um, deposits in its first couple of months since launch than the than the Thruxton did by far. So it looks like they're on the you know on a bit of a winning trajectory, Triumph, and. Uh, Hopefully next year we'll see good figures again from them. So well done, Triumph. Uh, great news just from a, from a business point of view. So that was the first thing that caught my eye. Um, next thing, if we come over here, just this article on the Trail Riders Fellowship. Um, I've talked about these before. This is the group of people that uh, promote green lane and off-road riding here in the UK. Something that uh, I'm keen on because of my little CRF, of course. I love riding off-road and it always strikes me that it's a bit dangerous to ride off-road on your own because, of course, if you do come off and you maybe break a leg or something, how are you going to get help? Uh, you're not going to be, you know, by def default on a main road. It might be hard for an ambulance to get to you, etc. So it just makes sense to do this sort of thing in a group from a safety point of view. Uh, and these guys know exactly where to go and the appeal for me is the fact that um, they claim to have access to routes or know where there are legal routes that you can ride that aren't on Ordnance Survey maps and that's how I go about finding green lanes at the moment. So I'm quite interested um, from that point of view. I'm not a massive fan of riding bikes in groups generally but this is, this is a bit different I think uh, because of that safety angle and also just making sure you're on the right route. 40 quid a year so um, quite a lot for an annual fee I think for that sort of thing. Just wondered if it's worth it if any of you are members or know more about it. Uh, drop me a note in the comments, be interested to hear. So that's the uh, Trail Riders Fellowship, uh, worthy, I think, of uh, a bit more of a look for me. So that was, uh, those are the only two stories I picked out of the first paper. The next paper, the big one, because the top story on this is the long-awaited launch of the Street Triple 765, a bike uh, that I've been uh, waiting for with bated breath because I'm a massive Street Triple fan, as you'll know if you've watched other of my videos. Um, so Triumph had their big launch of this um, a few weeks ago. Uh, and it was streamed live on the internet, although unfortunately I couldn't get onto the live stream. It had some technical issues, or I had some technical issues and couldn't see it, but I've since watched it back, so that's fine, so I'm up to date. Uh, and I have to say, um, to start with, I was a little bit underwhelmed by the launch, um, in that Triumph had kind of bigged it up, as of course marketing types do, um, to say that this was, you know, something absolutely a game changer and something completely different coming. Uh, and then when they revealed it, it just to me looks like, you know, a street triple, <laughs> which is fine. And I guess that, um, you know, I like the street triple, of course. So that's, it works for me. And I guess Trump have to do that difficult balancing act between keeping their diehard hard fans like myself happy, and not doing anything too radical. But I had kind of expected that they were going to do something that looked a bit different, something completely more, you know, more radical. And that's what I was expecting. So I was a little bit underwhelmed in the launch initially. But since then, and I've been thinking about the bike a bit more on paper, um, I'm probably changing my mind a bit and I can't wait to have a ride of it because everything about the bike, there's no doubt, has improved. Number one, they have sharpened the looks of the bike up a little bit. I'm still a fan of the underseat exhaust actually on the Street Triple, so, uh, which is obviously how it was originally designed. Um, but low slung exhaust is the way to go these days and of course it keeps the weight lower, so I understand why that's there. Uh, but generally the bike has been sharpened up. It's a bit more raked forward, looks a bit more sporty. It's got the newer uh, headlights from the Speed Triple. Um, but aside from the aesthetic changes, which I quite like, um, everything else about the bike has improved, so it's a little bit lighter weight, it's a little bit more powerful, um, it's got a lot more in terms of electronics, it's got a, a decent electronics package, it's got an amazing full colour uh, LCD display or TFT display, which I'm looking forward to looking at. So, so I was a little underwhelmed to start with, um, but actually now it's kind of growing on me and I'm really looking forward to uh, having a ride on one as soon as I can. don't quite know when that's going to be, but uh, I'm trying hard to, uh, to make that happen. 
Um, at the moment, the only thing I can think of replacing my Street Triple with is either another Street Triple or something like one of the new Bonnevilles, for example, the T100, which I'm loving at the moment. Um, but before I make any rash decisions, I need to ride this new baby to see. So yeah, new Street Triple is on the scene, the 765, as widely predicted. Really looking forward to seeing that. Um, so I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that soon. Okay, next story I picked out here, a bit of a sad one. Uh, no one ever see, likes to see the demise of a motorcycle company. And I was surprised to read that uh, Victory uh, has admitted defeat, as per the headline here. And the, um, the company that owns them, Polaris, um, have decided that they're not making enough money. Uh, and they've, they've basically turned the company off. Now, Polaris own a number of um, motorsports type companies, including Indian. Um, and in fact, the story in the paper from the following week talked about how actually the end of victory might be a good thing because it means more money can be devoted by Polaris into Indian. So that, maybe that's the case. But uh, for me, I was a little bit disappointed um, because I think that the bikes that Victory made, whenever I saw them in the flesh at previous NEC shows, just looked amazing. They look a bit more modern than the sort of classic Harley type stuff and it kind of appealed to me. I'm not a massive cruiser fan, but out of all the cruisers, the Victories were the ones that, uh, that I thought got it about right. So it's a bit of a shame to see that go. And of course, it's a shame to see any motorcycle mark go. So that's another one hit the dust, which is a bit of a shame. And then the last story in this um, paper, again, is, uh, is a Triumph story. I did say there's gonna be a bit of a Triumph theme here because Triumph are just knocking out so many new bikes at the moment. They've done this uh, comparison between the new T100, and in fact, this, this bike here looks like the very same bike that's in my garage as we speak, and I'm loving, uh, versus the old T100, the air oil-cooled version. Um, and their conclusion basically is that uh, it's a bit, of, a bit funny actually in that they say that it looks more retro than the older bike, which is quite funny when you think about it, uh, but in every way it's a better bike and I have to completely agree with them. Um, just the, the, the whole way the, ride, the bike rides, the way it looks, everything about it, the quality of the build is much, much nicer than the previous model and uh, I'm glad to say we concur on that. So uh, anyway, as I say, I've got that very bike in my garage at the moment. I've already published one video on it. I've got a few more um, that I'm going to be releasing over the next few days and weeks. So uh, stick around, stay tuned for those. Much more on the T100 to come on this very channel. Okay, so that was the second week's uh, paper. Right, third week's paper. So this is dated January the 18th, catching up now. Um, top story on here, Guy Martin back at the TT. Um, bit of a surprise because uh, Guy Martin uh, last year focused on his TV efforts and doing that uh, bizarre cycle race from the North America to South or whatever the heck it was, something endurancey, um, uh, and therefore didn't do much in the way of road racing or I think any. Uh, so to come back to the TT is great news if you're a fan of Guy Martin. And the big shocker, I suppose, for this is the fact that he's coming back in the Honda team. So that means he's going to be the teammate of John McGuinness, uh, which is going to be very interesting to see, to see how that goes. Now the headline here, Guy Martin, now it's serious. Basically what that's referring to is the fact that uh, for the first time he's actually being paid to ride. In the past he's done it for free because he sort of saw it as a hobby. This time he really wants to make a go of it. He's saying he's going to focus on road racing this year. He's going to dial back his TV and other interests so he can really have a crack at the TT. Uh, and he's on the new Fireblade. He's got um, you know a great teammate. Really uh, looking forward to seeing how he does. John McGuinness, obviously a great character and I just like his kind of blokey, um, beer and fags kind of way of going about things. And Guy Martin does split opinion. You either like him or you don't. I like him very much. I, uh, I've uh, read two of his books. I've got his third one for Christmas. Looking forward to reading that. Uh, I just like his approach to life. I like his enthusiasm about British engineering. To me, he's kind of a modern day Fred Dibner, if you remember him. Uh, so I like Guy, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing what he can do in the TT. I hope he does well. Uh, he's uh, been on the podium so many times and never actually won one. So this is a good chance for him to do so on that bike, I think. Fingers crossed for Guy. So uh, that was that. All next, yet another Triumph bike, the Street Cup. Seems this has broken cover now to the press crew uh, to ride, uh, and this is the first review of the Street Cup. Now, personally, I'm not a massive fan of the Cafe Racer style, uh, but this looks quite nice. It's based on the um, Street Twin, uh, which was a bike I rode a little while ago and I enjoyed. Nice, lightweight, little flickable bike. So again, looking forward to having a little ride of this. Uh, it's got a bit of work to do for me, as I say, I'm not a huge fan straight off the bat of this style of bike. It'll be interesting to see what it's like with the drop handlebars and so on. So looking forward to riding that soon. It's, uh, it is in the diary. I'm definitely going to be riding it, maybe this very bike, who knows. Um, so stick around for a video on that in the not too distant future. That's the Street Cup. Right, and then last but not least, one of my continuing bugbears. Uh, as you may know, if you've watched other of these um, paper reviews, I don't do sport much. Uh, I do a little bit of bike sport, but not a lot. 
Uh, this one was a classic um, case. This is uh, Sam Sunderland. He's just won the Dakar Rally. He's a Brit. He's based in um, Dubai, but he's actually British. Um, and he's won the thing. Now, he's never even finished it before in the past. And if you know anything about the Dakar Rally, you'll know what an absolute tough nightmare it is to do. So the fact that he finished it and won it is a huge, huge, huge achievement. Once again, did you see any reference of it on the British media or on the TV? Any coverage of it? No, nor did I. So a real shame. So top congratulations to Sam Sunderland for what is an amazing thing. I don't suppose he'll be getting a knighthood. Uh, but there we go. So uh, well done him. Let's big him up in our little circle at least. So that was the third week's paper. And then to this week's paper, here we go. Even more on the Guy Martin story, sort of reaction to the fact that he's rejoining Honda with John McGuinness. We won't dwell on that anymore. We talked a bit about it. Um, but they do talk in here a bit more about the Honda Fireblade launch, the new bike, uh, because this is the standard bike now. In the past, um, the press have reviewed the SP, which is, was the sort of MotoGP-esque type bike, if you like, uh, with all the bells and whistles. They've now brought this bike out. This is 4K less, £4,000 less than the SP bike. And all you're really losing, other than the fancy paint job, is the active Olin suspension. So um, if you're anything like me, I'm not, I don't have a particularly sensitive bum, uh, I think. And um, I, I don't know, suspension to me is a, is a, I know if it's soft or hard and that's about it. So for me, it wouldn't make a big deal of difference. I guess if you're a track god, then it's probably a big deal. Well, I'm sure it's a big deal. But certainly for 4K less, uh, you can get basically the same bike. It's not got shabby suspension. It's got uh, shower suspension. It's proper, fully adjustable stuff. Uh, so it's still a great bike and four grand less, as I say. So um, there we are. That's the new Fireblade. Look forward to seeing that out and about in the wild. Second story I picked out here, again, on the sports bike theme. Ducati. A uh, bit of a shock here for Ducati fans because the boss of Ducati, uh, our friend uh, Claudio Domenicali, I think that's how you possibly pronounce it, uh, top hairstyle the fellow's got, um, he said that uh, in two to three years' time, the next superbike from um, Ducati, so by implication the replacement for the Panigale, which I love so much, will be a V4-powered bike. And this is a massive shock for Ducati fans because, of course, Ducati has always uh, built its reputation on the big old V-twin. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, it does open the door, the article says, for Ducati perhaps in the future to split the V4, making a 600cc V-twin a possibility, so that's interesting. Um, but it also, of course, makes you think, what's that going to do to the old V-twin bikes, which will be regarded potentially as true Ducatis? Is that going to put the value of them up? So uh, I shall certainly be keeping hold of my Panigale in case it becomes a classic. I love my Panigale anyway, it's not going anywhere. So as long as I can, I shall be keeping that. But uh, interesting to see where this is going to go. Two to three years off yet, so long time to think about it. Who knows, could change their mind. Okay, next story. Um, the Ducati Scrambler. Now, the Scrambler's been around for a while, but this is now their Scrambler version of the Scrambler, if you see what I mean. They're calling this the Desert Sled. Saw it at the NEC, looks lovely. Um, and MCN have got to ride it and have reviewed it. And um, there's uh, lots of changes to the bike. It may look a bit like a, you know, the normal Scrambler, but it is quite a different bike. It really has been designed so that you could take it off-road if you want to. Um, it's got a slightly different geometry. It's got a slightly different frame. The swing arm is attached differently. It's not attached to the engine. It's on a different pivot point. It's got some different farkles and so on. It's got these nice gold wheels. I've got to think about gold wheels. I like them. Um, so there we are. That's it. They, they, they rate it as an off-road bike. But the downside with it is it's £1,800 more than the standard Scrambler. So again, um, unless you really are going to take it off-road, you're probably not going to spend an extra nearly two grand just to get that stuff. But it does look like quite a nice bike, I must admit. Um, when I rode the standard Scrambler, I wasn't that impressed. I didn't kind of like the mix of retro with modern. But this one, out of all the Scramblers, I think is the best looking. Um, so we'll see. Uh, be nice to have a go on one at some point and see how it compares to the original Scrambler. Okay. Next story. Again, sorry, yet another Triumph story. This is what, and again, why we're on Scramblers. The Triumph uh, Street Twin based Scrambler has now broken cover. Again, a bike that I'm hopefully going to be riding uh, in the not too distant future. I love the Scrambler style of bikes. I said I wasn't so keen on cafe race as well. That's because my allegiance really allegiance lies with Scramblers. So looking forward to having a go on this. Based on the Street Twin, should be a great little bike. So um, stick around and we'll we'll see. Hopefully get a review of that soon. And then uh, last but not least, again those big there's a multi-page um, interview here with Guy Martin. We've already talked about that, so I won't talk about it anymore. Okay, so there we are. That's what was in MCN the last month. If you don't subscribe and uh, you want to you know learn more about it, you can still get hold of these. So get yourself back issues and, and read up the full stories. All right, hope that's been of interest. Look forward to your comments below as ever and uh, look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.